Hello Rabbags, it's Jade. Welcome to the Valheim AMA. The devs did a great job. They spent a couple of hours, a bunch of them, answering questions. Robin, aka Grimcore, Henrik, very weird Reddit name, I can't even pronounce it. Jens Hellstrom, Smithy, Josephine Bernstrom as Monty, Andreas Thomasman as Luma, and Jonathan Smars as Jay Smars, as well as obviously Lisa, the community manager. So apologies if I've got anyone's names wrong there. I am a murderer of all languages, don't worry, not just Swedish. It's taken me a while to edit this down because they answered so many bloody questions, so many great answers. Some of it's a still bit wishy-washy, but we did get some definitive yeses or nos about content and about stuff that's going to be happening with the game. This is the second one they've done, so if you're missing some questions, you're wondering why they're not there, go and watch the first one. I did cover it much earlier in the year. I'll try and leave the link somewhere in the comment section. There's going to be no gameplay. I will show the questions up on the screen, so if you really want to take a look, you can. But this video is best played while you do something else. Playing Valheim on your second screen, doing the dishes and the washing, or going outside and chopping wood, getting ready for your next viking raid. They do cover a bunch of stuff, including content plans, how long it's going to take to finish Valheim, a bunch of stuff about dungeons, mounts, and whether or not you'll be able to do farming, and weapons, upgrades, and armor stands, and armor slots. So basically a whole ton of stuff. I've tried putting some timestamps in as well for all the questions, if you do want to skip, and if you do appreciate all that work I've just done for this video, then do leave a like. Make sure to subscribe for the best in not just Valheim, but survival games content, and let's go. Contronix has asked, will we be able to get a stackable smelted ore to place around the world, like the stone, wood and coal stacks that we had in the half and home update? Monty said, decorating is always nice, it's absolutely possible there might be more stackable items in the future, though now it's not the priority. Impressive Chemical asks, when cooking items such as stew and soup, can we have the option to create batches of 10 based on the available in in incidents, ingredients in our inventory? I have enough to create 10 carrot stews for my inventory. It'd be nice to click once versus 10 times. Smithy has said that it is something they've discussed and they will expand later during the game development. They've already got stuff you can make in batches like arrows and bronze bars, but it does require quite a lot of GUI changes to be done. So it's on their to-do list in the future. Any more plans for uses of black metal in building pieces? It's abundant, it seems like it makes sense with useful for stuff like fences, furniture and embellishments like windows and doors. Iron feels too scarce for simple like fencing, it also requires you to put time into mining it, whereas black metal just piles up and doesn't take long before you never really need it. Now that was a question from Coatless Berserker, obviously black metal is kind of a resource that you're not maybe meant to necessarily need that much yet. You're going to be using a lot more of them tools and weapons for the next biome that they add, which is going to be the Mistlands. So yeah, it may seem a bit useless right now, but it will become useful in the future. That's exactly what Zyvez says. Terrible name. Terrible. Change it. That's exactly what Henrik replied. Are there any plans to utilize the cool blue troll hide in more builder armor items? They've simply said no plans just yet. Someone's asked if whether or not they will get ores in the game, and they said that they're not going to add ores. They discussed it, but they felt it was too multiplayer focused and could lead to difficulties balancing boats in the future. I'm deeper on the idea of having oars in boats. Smithy said we want the game to be balanced both for the single player and multiplayer experience and not that it's more profitable to do either. Someone wants to know why there isn't any diagonal doors going across and stuff. It seems pretty obvious in a grid based game building game. Grimcore simply said, well it seems obvious to some, but we want to be putting things in a place we feel is good for both the build system and the feel of Alheim. There will be more build stuff coming in the future. And I think a lot of people have looked at some of the mods that allow you to put building pieces at different angles. Jonathan Smars has replied, the current system doesn't support this as we want to calculate structure stability, etc. So there are no plans for free axis rotation at the moment. Would you consider a highland biome inspired by Icelandic, Scotland, Scandinavian plateaus? A biome without trees, hosting sheep, legum berries, etc. Lumar has said that nope, they don't have any plans for that kind of biome just at the moment yet. How are you planning to balance the ocean biome? Asks Gimme on Onion. Smithy has a bit of a long winded answer here, just basically saying that there's a lot they could do potentially with it. They might make certain monsters only appear in certain parts of the ocean biome. It may be all just about the different types of creatures to help balance it, the difficulty. And it may end up being trigger events, so certain things won't happen until you've progressed certain things in the game or killed certain creatures or bosses. Regarding the water biomes being more balanced, Smithy has said that no, they're not looking to add any others. Someone suggested maybe like a deep waters biome, but generally what's in there at the moment is what we're going to get. Someone asked about mini bosses and Grim said hell yeah, but then he quickly replied no 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 no. 
yes, they are coming. It's one of the things they've spoke about in the past. There will be some form of mini little bosses or just creatures that are obviously a lot harder and a bit special compared to some of the others, but not full-blown bosses. Someone's asked about having more animals. But in the last AMA, they answered this question. They want every creature in Valorant to serve some sort of unique purpose by adding a new mechanic or offering a new resource. Because of this, we don't want to just throw in new animals for the sake of it, but rather want to make sure they're truly adding something to the game. Are there going to be any plans for adding cosmetic rewards or items for completing maybe small quests to parties or solo players? Lumar has said that they don't plan on adding any kind of quest system, but they do love dungeon crawling. And for that said, they're thinking of ways they can force players out of their comfort zone to go out and explore even more. How this will be implemented, if ever, is yet to be decided though. New biomes and the upcoming mountains dungeon feel like a good start to scratch that itch. Someone's asked if there's any plans for Yggdrasil, the big tree in the sky, maybe another boss or biome. Monty has said there are indeed plans for Yggdrasil, although maybe not in the way that you expect. And someone's had the balls to ask. The arm stands. We thought we were getting arm stands. Everyone saw a tease of it before the half and home update. And it did look like arm stands. So it totally did. Grimcross said the teaser was intended not for arm stands. It was for the coin stacks that was in the background. It was a very bad teaser. But yeah, it'd be lovely to be able to have an arm stand where you can hang your stuff and show it. As of right now though, there's no plans to implement them in the near future. Are you going to be able to dive in the ocean and find sunken treasure or special sunken ships? Jonathan has said they are there discussing it. It sounds like a lot of fun, but no, nothing at the moment. Is there going to be traps and defenses along with harder raids on our bases? In terms of traps, actually, they elaborated and said that it'd be more about actual catching animals. And in that instance, Luma said, no, you're not going to get any snares added to the game at the moment. It could be potential in the future for making fishing a bit more interesting, but that's pretty, pretty much just about it. And non too committal just at the moment about more defences in the near future at least, but it's something they consider. So we get in caves or a dungeon for the mountains, can we expect a dungeon for planes, maybe see where the black metal comes from? Grim has said that if there's a reason to put a dungeon there, we'll put it in, but we're just putting in dungeons with no good reward is never something people want to play. Finishing off with, if people loved lore as much as they did, it'd be nice to have just that as a kind of reward for clearing out dungeons. Yeah, heads would roll if you did that mainstream. Is the game going to get more NPCs and random encounters? We want to keep the world interesting with mysteries, says Grimm. We have many things up our sleeves that we want to implement as random events and mysterious happenings. Keep an eye out. We know that there was going to be a special celebrity guest, Gangleri, which most people assume now is Odin in another guise. And that's most likely to be some sort of NPC. And we also maybe will have Munin the Raven of Lore as well appearing more as well in the future. Someone's asked if they can customise their gear more in the future so that the characters don't look the same. Right now you can customise certain things in your arsenal against the forces of Valheim, capes and shields mainly. I think the general philosophy is that we'd rather give you side grade armours that would benefit your playstyle rather than looking different. But we're still young, anything is possible. Then can we pet baby animals? They've said that it's not a thing at the moment. Some people in the team want it to happen but it's not necessarily guaranteed yet. Is there a possibility for a neck raincoat? That's a great idea. I think we want the weather to be able to affect you. Maybe in later stages of the game, we could start thinking about being able to craft a neck raincoat. But right now, no plans. Someone's asked if boars could maybe not see fire. At the moment, they can sense it through walls. They generally freak out if you put it inside the chimney area. And so if you've got a pen nearby, they will get startled. It's not something they're working on in the future, but yeah, if enough people request it, it's maybe something they could look at. Obviously, with performance being a major issue in games like these, they've got to be careful of doing certain things like that. Someone's asked what have the, been the most surprising features of the game that the developers have seen. Smithy agreed that campfires as a viable weapon was one of them and that people might actually do speedruns and it would grow a community doing it. Jonathan Smars has said that huge boat builds, modern houses, Ghibli villages and boat races. And Luma said that it's just mind blowing to see so many builds and creations. But he really loves actually seeing people build shelves and pantries using chairs. Henquiz said he's most proud of being able to build proper chimneys in your house. Grimcross said Ser serpent scared a lot of the Vikings. Jonathan said seeing people die in the game and just fun ways that people play. And Lumar said he really loves to troll. Smithy said he had the most fun balancing the feud in Shaman. Someone did ask to elaborate on some of their priorities they're working on at the moment. And Monty has said their two big ones are the Mistlands and a new addition to the mountains, so the brand new dungeon or cave. H&H &H focused on stuff to do around the home, decorate and build, but now the next one is based for people that want to explore. 
Someone's asked whether or not some of the early mid-game armor sets will be more viable for the end game, or can we make more end game hide based armor sets? Hopefully with that stealth bonus. Jonathan has said there will be more gear options in upcoming content patches that will offer some more variation. Someone's asked if we can get some different types of mushrooms, maybe red cap berserker ones. Luma said there's no plans for adding such mushrooms. Is there going to be a time that players will be able to build assets that spawn in the world that are currently uncraftable? For example, leather and bone pieces from fueling villages, or they list other examples like the big stone slabs in the shape of like a creature and stuff like that. I guess just more the cosmetic stuff we find while exploring. Henrik has said they don't have any plans for that feature, but in case of the fueling buildings, they may become available for construction in the future because agreed that they look pretty neat. That would be really cool if you could maybe add a little bit more of that fueling look to your bases. Are there going to be any more mounts in the game? Maybe it's someone considering calling to Luma, but that's about it at the moment. Someone's asked if there's going to be any more water creatures and Grim replied, maybe, yep, big, small, scary and, you know, probably just little fishes, but also creatures maybe in the sky, so I'm guessing like albatrosses or seagulls and stuff. Someone's asked if chains will be crafted and Luma has said no. Someone's asked whether or not the game is going to receive any more content once the roadmap is finished. Is it going to be a finished game? Are we going to continue bringing more and more updates? Henrik has said when we've released the final three biomes, Mistlands, Ashlands and Deep North, the game will have a solid end, i.e. we will be able to win the game. This will be Valheim 1.0 and we will consider the game as having left active development. That being said, of course, we will still support the game, so there will still be patches and most likely some content updates from time to time. They've also said they will also work on the ocean biome before 1.0. Someone's asked if drawbridges could be a thing and Grim has said, hell yeah. Probably the biggest one of all is, is the Mistlands going to come out this year? And as I've kind of been telling you guys, I don't expect this to come out until at least February, maybe even March. And they've confirmed it now that it won't be releasing in 2021. But there will be other content. We know they're working on this dungeon update for the mountains and we know they've said they're going to add smaller stuff. We've already had some hotfixes go through recently. Someone's asked if Spears could get a bit of a revamp. They don't seem to like it that much. Grim has said that Spears feel pretty good, but it's always something they're willing to work on if it is a bit wonky. People are asking for dual wielding and Jonathan has said, good idea, but no plans for it just yet. Although Henrik has said that later on, it could be a specific weapon that allows you to dual wield rather than just anything you want. Someone's asking about high-end optimization for their PC. Yes, always optimization. I can't believe that question even got asked because developers are always sitting on their early access games thinking, you know what, let's not just optimize it at all. Actually, no, I'll take that back. We do have Art Survival Evolved. Someone's asked about the final Dream God Realm boss fight, possibly. That there's nine bosses total, and that would mean there'd be four new biomes. Jonathan said that's a fun idea, but there's no plans for this at the moment. Planned biomes have been announced, Mistlands, Ashlands, Deep North and Ocean. That doesn't mean every single one of them is going to get a boss fight. Someone said that one time there were fire mechanics in the game, a bit like Icarus you may have seen recently. Leave your campfire or walk over it, you can set a fire to your whole building. But Grimm has said that when they first started back in 2019, there was a version of that, uh, Valheim that had that in it. So it's not a guarantee it will return, I don't think it will, but it's something that Grimm especially would like to see. Maybe they can make it a game mode or an option you could turn on and off in the future for your own servers. We do know they've got that on the horizon as part of their plans to offer the ability to customise and do things more. Someone's asked about regular kind of armour, like padded armour more, or stuff that we can go horizontally in progression to just mix it up a little bit. One of you said there's going to be plans for side grade armour to give you guys more options, but regular clothing isn't something we have concrete plans on right now, but it could be something in the far, far future. Someone's asked can you give us a hint of things come to Mistlands, and Grim has said new creatures, mechanics, new mist. Grim has said it feels like we're opening up a big box of toys to be able to play with, and I think if you like exploring you'll love the Mistlands or hate it, that lurks in the mist do not give hugs. Someone's asked if they'd like to add more Norse mythology into the game, like the hints at the children of Loki or the classic tales. But Monty is stressed, and this is what I really love, because some people do get a bit too caught up in lore and happen to be exactly what it was. Valheim is separate from the other nine worlds. So who knows how many of the mythological creatures have actually found their way there. Maybe some of the gods don't even know that Valheim exists. And I love that answer. I don't think you should be too beholden to something. This allows a bit more freedom to draw and pull in different kinds of resources. And as I mentioned recently, taking a look at the artisan workbench, as well as some of the other stuff with like the obliterator, it's almost got a steampunk aesthetic to it sometimes. And I'm pretty sure that wasn't really a Viking thing. 
Is there going to be any way to change the terrain modulation, like dig caves or dungeons, without getting down where we dig in the floor? There's no plan to do that at the moment. You'll build villages and houses, but we're not going to be building huge, massive, dwarven underground cities. Someone's asked if there's going to be more armor. Usually risk getting one shot or two shotted in control hide armor that looks want more variety. And Jonathan has said that there will be more in future patches that will offer more variation. Someone's asked whether or not we'll have respawning metals and ores and have said that simply no. It's not a MMORPG. You're not going to have thousands of players and even the most dedicated of player, yes I'm sure might be having a bit of trouble getting some of the resources to build their huge cities. But according to them they've got 100% of each metal, tin, iron, copper, silver etc in the game. Maybe on like a dedicated server where they probably increase the limit of players beyond 10 which I've seen happen and I've seen people complaining. Well there, that's kind of your own problem. If you run a server like that where you've got 20 or 30 people playing on it through mods, then maybe you should just get a mod that gives you extra resources when you craft them, or go ahead and spawn the items in. But yeah, the idea is being that maybe if you got to the point, if you did exhaust all the resources, you would just go to another map and just explore that one. You could always bring it over if you really wanted to. Is the game going to get more difficulty modes? And they have spoke about this in the past, Monty has said, but not until after the game is 1.0. And yeah, I think that will fall under the options that you'll have to create your own world in the far future. Someone's asked what favourite mods they had in mind, and someone decided to try being a bit smart and saying the cartography table was a mod that they've kind of just ripped off. Basically, the devs don't really play with mods, and I get this a lot. I've spoke to quite a few developers, you spend too long messing around with a bunch of mods sometimes and it can influence how you're designing your game or the work you're doing. And while that sounds great because mods can be great, it also takes away a little bit from your own original vision. I compare it to being a YouTuber, I generally try not to watch too much of my competition. If I'm covering a game, I will go and watch someone playing a game that I'm not even playing. Maybe I just like the look of it because I know that I don't have to worry about watching someone doing something better than me and then that might influence me and then I ruin my vibe. Sometimes it's good to take notice of the competition or take notice of some great ideas from modders, yep. But I think early in your development of your game, and Valheim is still early, we're still only like 10 months into its life, I think now is not the time to start going looking at mods for inspiration or support. They've clearly got their own vision and that's what they'll be working towards. And I hate to break it to most modders or people that love modders to death, but every idea that a modder had, you can bet most of us have probably had that same idea. We all want more loot in the game, we all want more varieties of weapons and different enemies, but does it actually fit? Is there a need for it? That's something modders don't consider, and they don't have to, they're just there to mess around and see what skills they can add. But yeah, just expanding, because I see this question a lot and it's a topic that I speak about a lot. Modders are great, don't get me wrong, they've extended life of games, and I think there's a time and a place to add them. I think once the game's hit maybe a year and a half, basically when all the core game loops are in the game completely, that's when you can maybe open up a little bit. Then that's the time to maybe look into opening up something like Steam Workshop and legitimately supporting them. Also the flip side is that Smithy answered and said that yes, one reason is that mods usually don't bring balanced things to a game. Most are either to make the gameplay easier or just more diverse with more things than what is already available. So there's a few references to fire and magic skills in the code and I've showed you guys a bunch of stuff in the past like area of effect types and sort of orbs that you could use. Monty has simply said you'll have to wait and see if that gets added. Is the map going to be the same size it is right now? Are they going to expand it? No plans to expand or change the size of it. Someone asked about the dungeons being added more and yes obviously they're referencing again the new dungeon being added to the mountain biome. Eric is the dungeon master and that's what he's working on. They're also considering adding dungeons to some of the new and older biomes as well. Someone wants to know if they can turn off the UI, specifically timers and numbers to make it a bit more immersive. Not just simply turning off the full UI, which we know we can do, but maybe just reducing some of the information that pops up. One that you said it's not something they've got any plans for at the moment. The UI gives the necessary information. Someone wants to know if there's going to be dances or instruments added to emotes and they've said simply no. Grim answered he loves the idea of melodic tunes off your flute and dancing with your friends but no plans for that just tonight. Is there going to be more animals like chickens, cats and rabbits? A bit later on someone specifically asked for more cattle like creatures and Jonathan did reply sure more of them types of creatures yes. Grimmer said yes. Someone's also asking again about the water physics I've answered this question before they're not going to add a water system like tar where it can flow more freely 
and become almost like a river or lake that you can direct to wherever you want. It'd be too taxing on the system, which means that you're going to get more lag and basically not great to play. The TAR is a test case that I've done for it. It will just about works without causing too many issues with performance, but if they carry on doing stuff like that with water, it could seriously impact the performance of the game. And the devs pretty much outline them same answers here. Someone wants to know if there'll be extra special abilities maybe by getting to a certain level in your skills. And this is something that I kind of like the idea of. Getting to level 20 gives you a special shot or more chance of doing something. Or in this case, Reaper suggests dual wielding after reaching a certain level in swords. Henrik has said they've considered it but not implementing such a feature since they don't want the skill system to be too pervasive. The skill system should work in a supportive manner rather than being a goal in itself. Some wants to know if there's going to be a fill all button for charcoal, kiln, fire, spinning wheel and furnaces, and maybe if the all fill button is cool enough. Someone wants to know if we'll be able to ever plant red mushrooms, yellow mushrooms, blueberries, raspberries and thistle. And Grim said, sadly, no. We want the player to have to go out and actually find your favourite mushroom spots and blueberry spots. Don't say it's impossible, but highly unlikely. That's a shame. I've got to say, I like the idea of opening up the gameplay a little bit and having a bit more farming features in it. At the moment, we know that you've got to grow certain crops in certain places around the world. But things like blueberries and strawberries, maybe, yeah, some mushrooms too. It would kind of be cool if you could potentially do that. That's my sad face that you're not seeing right now. But yeah, they basically want players running around and not becoming a Valheimville. Someone wants to know if there's any kind of relationship between satisfactory developers and Iron Gate. Nope. They're just simply published by Coffee Stain. They do with all the business side of things, the marketing. They sometimes suggest stuff but it doesn't mean that there's any kind of connection. There's more building stuff on its way in the far future. They've definitely got some cool stuff according to Grimcore. Grim doesn't want any kind of pause button in the game. That's what someone else has asked for too. It is a mod, you can go and get it if you really want. And someone has asked once again, and I've got to say, and I speak to Grim pretty regular. I feel like I'm friendly terms with him since he's come on board and done a podcast with me a couple of times. And I like and respect the other developers. But I feel like they're being extremely stubborn around the idea of having armor separate from inventory. I feel like in the past they've mentioned it, that it would be something they look into. There's definitely been interviews where Henrik has actually explicitly said they're discussing it. But here he says, yes, we have, but we decide against it because we feel it is good as it is. But they have said it's plausible we'll add more inventory space. And we know that might be in the form of backpacks or pouches. I feel like if they were to do a vote, I would say that they would come across a big, huge percentage of players involved wanting more actual taking away armors from your inventory. From a logistical sense, it does not make sense that you carry your armor in your backpack. Sorry, Valheim devs, Iron Gate, I love you. You guys know that, but you're wrong on this. So many other games have had these problems. I'm playing Grounded at the moment right now. They had the same issue, people complaining. They added it. It helped out a lot. They've still got inventory management issues where players are still overfilling stuff, but it's just such a nice little godsend being able to switch out and really have that space. We know that Valheim's about exploration and going out prepared for a certain situation, a certain task, and so you've got to be prepared with the right kind of armor, but it does feel kind of just something that was mis maybe placed or they really didn't think hard enough about it or they're just being stubborn over it, even when so much of the community wants it. I'm not gonna lie, I nearly cut this out of the Q&A, but I thought it's important to give a little bit of my opinion, and I have cut out a bunch of stuff where I waffled on way too much about my thoughts and feelings about some of these questions. But this is my hill. This is the hill, the tomb, the grassy knoll that I'm gonna die on. You need to have it. I know we could have extra slots, and that would just do the same job. If you've got extra slots of inventory, then it's the same thing as having dedicated slots for your armor. But there's something special about having them armor slots. It might make it better to transfer your items to armor stands as well. You can make it functional. It's probably the one thing I will carry on disagreeing with the devs over. It just feels a little bit extra stubborn when clearly so many people want it. And it's kind of a bona fide feature in pretty much every game you'll ever play. I said what I said, but please love me still, Iron Gate. I beg you. Someone asked about adding popular mods as official versions to the game, and some games have done that, like Art Survival Vault set up s schemes where they paid modders to actually include their work, or sponsored them just to develop it, or even hire them in the future. Jonathan said that they're really impressed by the dedication that these modders have, but they're not about to implement anything like that anytime soon. Any plans to build ships? No, is the answer for that. Someone asked about having rideable horses. 
We've already got the locks, but maybe there'll be more in the future. FYI, back in the day before Richard put his uh, accounts on lockdown on his uh, art station and stuff like that, he was loving the idea of Vikings riding boars. I'm just saying. Someone asked about the pressure of having so many people, like literally up to the point where it's going to be 10 million in maybe a few months time. Grim has said this, I'm speaking for myself now. For me, it was more of a positive charge running through me. Keep a steady foot and do the same work with the same amount of passion. And we would deliver the same amount of quality. It's obviously sad to see that people misunderstand why we make certain choices, but we always do it for the greater good of the Valheim experience. We are all just doing what we can to make a good game. Having the game blow up as it did gave us a bigger playing field. We're able to do H&H &H trade with hand-painted animations due to success. Pressure is good. We want to deliver a good product. Hey, and they answered my question. Thank you, Jonathan. What kind of content apart from Mistlands are you most looking forward to eventually tackling? That's what I asked. Finishing all the biomes and making the whole world feel filled and varied so that Valheim is a game that you can enjoy for many years to come. Someone's asked if they can make the game a bit more PvP, maybe have different starting areas like red and blue versus over the world. And that's interesting because I'm pretty sure that according to the devs themselves, at one point they were thinking about Valheim being that kind of game. But that quickly turned into what it is now, which is PvE, and that's how it's going to remain. Someone's asked about more kind of gaps in available weapons, like a silver Adgar or black metal pickaxe. And Jonathan said they simply don't want to just be making every single tier have exactly the same kind of weapons. They also appreciate non-uniform design and basically not having one of everything of every material to keep things more varied. Someone's asked about reducing the frequency of Grey Dwarf attacks and they've said, Jonathan has said, that they think it's okay at the moment but there will always be tweaks. Someone's asked about automation and the devs have flatly said that no, there's not going to be any kind of automation in the game. Grim has said he's ultra hyped for Mistlands, for reals it's going to be awesome. Is there going to be more furniture pieces decorated as safe havens? Monty said yes, how many? We're not sure yet. It's still too soon. Ashlands, Deep North and Ocean will see a lot of new additions, but they're going to be worked on after the Mistlands. They are also thinking of adding achievements, of course, it's kind of the done thing, especially when it comes to eventual console ports, but it won't be done before the access is complete. Someone asked about trees having fruits, nope, but of course Jonathan said we do have pine cones. Someone's a bit confused about the Odin Cape, it wasn't a pre-order bonus or an item for pre-ordering, it was given to you for taking part in the beta or at least trying to sign up for it. So yeah, sadly, if you want the Odin Cape and stuff, you're not going to be able to buy it. They've got no plans to sell it as a separate move. They reconfirmed as well there's chances of trapdoors or in terms of like drawbridges, and that's something they answered earlier. Someone's asked about having more frequent update schedule. Henrik said, after the early access release, we launched an ambitious roadmap that we had to backtrack on because in our case, it didn't facilitate development of good content. Our development cycle became boxed in. So yeah, while we're fully aware this may not be the best strategy for player retention, the written roadmap from now until 1.0 release will consist of the three final biomes, the Mistland, Ashlands and Deep North. Individually, these biomes will most likely take between six to nine months to develop. So on that kind of time scale, we will be looking at Valheim leaving early access at some point in 2023. And that might be when we get on console because they have said they would maybe look at that at the same time. But they are going to have small updates in between these big chunky ones. Someone's asked about having an area effect halving solution instead of just being hand picking pressing E on everything. And Grim has said that we have the Loxes so maybe we can use them somehow. Are we going to see more traders like Holder? Yep, hopefully, according to Grim, Boulder, Golder, and Trogdar, he hopes. I love the idea of that, having actual separate traders all around the world that sell separate things, or maybe even just give you different prices. Is there coming any new content to the old biomes? And Lisa has pipped in. Yep, there's still some things that we haven't had a chance to add to the older biomes yet, and we'll sprinkle some of that content out as we work on Mistlands. We have some cool stuff on the way, so keep an eye out. They're definitely going to be adding more lore, she answers in another question, pretty similar, and more information about Valheim and history throughout the world. But the game won't be more story driven than it is now. You're not going to suddenly see a bunch of cutscenes kickstarting or coming during while you're playing the game. The stones are pretty much what we've got. Monty's answered someone asking about using materials that we don't really use much of lately now for more decorative items, and they've said that, yep, it's something they'll think about in the future. Again, they're reaffirming as well that they are going to add world modifiers and easy modes or harder modes, but obviously something towards the closer the release of the game. Someone's been really anal about having creative mode, and it was pointed out you can activate cheats if you want to. 
So that's pretty much it for now. If there is a second part to this, if they go through more, and I think they've answered more than I would give them credit for, there is a lot of questions and answers here. But we're getting into the bottoms now where maybe they haven't been receiving that much. I will definitely go over and add some more in the second part. But as a recording, as you can see, it's been two hours since they've started answering these questions and it does look like they've started to dry up a little bit. If there's anything I missed at all, let me know in the comment section down below and maybe I'll even just type it in there. But like I said, if it's substantial, they carry on answering all the way through till tomorrow, I will do a part two. I gotta say, big shout out to these guys. They have been pretty patient. They're answering some of the hard questions. Some of the questions they're answering with lots of optimism and hopefuls and things like, yes, it's something they want to possibly add. But they're also being pretty direct in certain things that they're definitely not going to be doing. And remember, this is only certain questions being asked. It doesn't limit or kind of stop anything else being added to the game. I think the sky's the limit for Valheim. And while it's not always going to be super, super hype and everyone under the sun is going to be playing it, it is going to be one of them games that you'll be able to return to over and over again. Every big update that comes with these Mistlands or the biome updates will be hitting it. And even these small updates offer some unique ways to dive back in and just revisit an old friend. So yeah, good stuff, Valheim devs, Iron Gate. And that is it. I've kept you long enough. I'll see you, Ratbags, laters.